The conclusion of the 2010 NBA season saw Kobe Bryant capture his fifth and final ring, LeBron James win his second MVP, and Tyreek Evans winning the Rookie of the Year award over future All-Stars, MVPs, and champions. He did this by putting together a historic rookie campaign that had only been achieved by three basketball greats. They brought MVPs and championship glory home. Tyreek was crowned to do this next after his stellar rookie year. But fast forward just nine years, Tyreek, the man who had fans gushing over his potential, is out of a job. On June 25th, 2009, Tyreek Evans was drafted 4th overall by the Sacramento Kings after putting together a stellar college campaign that led the Memphis Tigers to a 16-0 record in Conference USA. The 6'6 combo guard was turning heads. He was a terrific isolation scorer that was agile, strong, and had a certain calmness and swagger to his game. In his first few months in the league, he had already put together a string of 20 and 30 point games. He even led the Kings franchise to overcome a 35 point deficit against the Bulls. When All-Star Weekend rolled around, it was no brainer when he was selected to play in the rookie and sophomore game. There, he led his team to a 140-128 victory against the sophomores and took home the MVP award. The hype behind Tyreek Evans really took off with 20, 5, and 5. He was on the cusp of achieving what only three NBA players had ever done at the time. Averaged 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists as a rookie. Each of the formers who did this became superstars that captured MVPs and rings. The Kings desperately wanted him to achieve this and bring hope and excitement back to a city that's been witnessing lackluster basketball for the last few years. And when he finally achieved this, it was a big deal. The fans in the arena went nuts, giving him a standing ovation, while the announcers praised him and said he'd be the hero for the Sacramento Kings. With his rookie season over, the 25-5 season secured, he inevitably won the Rookie of the Year award by a landslide margin. The Sacramento franchise was excited about their young, exhilarating product. But it all went wrong. Tyreek Evans fell into what many second-year players fall victim to, the sophomore slump. With an early season injury to the ankle, his numbers dropped across the board only playing 57 games. The next two seasons were more of the same. Injuries kept him from playing over 20% of his games. A player who heavily relied on his athleticism was slowly being stripped of it with each passing injury. These affected his stats as they were steadily declining each year. There were other factors that also played into this. The Kings started playing him out of position at the small forward spot. This hurt him. The position didn't fit his game, it reduced his usage rate. A player like Tyreek required the ball. He didn't have a consistent jumper that allowed him to play off the ball. His game was creating plays and breaking down players in isolation situations. On top of that, the Sacramento Kings had a terrible development program and were very mismanaged. Them consistently disappointing let them acquire a lot of young talent to the squad. The problem that came was these young kids began fighting with each other for these minutes and that resulted in them stunting each other's growth. The best example of this was after the Kings drafted Tyreek Evans. They drafted DeMarcus Cousins, Isaiah Thomas, and Hassan Whiteside. All these players had better seasons after leaving Sacramento. And yes, including DeMarcus. He was having a stellar year before he tore his Achilles with the Pelicans. So back to Tyreek. With Tyreek Evans consistently being injured and showing no improvements on the floor, 
The Kings made the decision to not extend his rookie deal and send him to the Pelicans on a sign and trade deal for Grievous Vasquez. And with the Pelicans, Tyreek looked to overcome the public perception that he failed to live up to expectation. It took him a while to adjust playing in a new city and system, but he was really able to thrive in the 2014-2015 season when the Pelicans allowed him to dictate the offense after Drew Holiday went down with a serious ankle injury. He looked extremely comfortable in the point guard position, averaging 7.7 .7 dimes there and helping the Pelicans improve significantly from an 18-19 and start to a 26-17 and finish. He became the reason as to why the Pelicans made the playoffs that season. With him at the ball, AD at the middle, and an assortment of shooters at the wing, he wasn't wrecking havoc, he was wreaking havoc. That season, Tyreek showed a glimpse of what he can truly be, and he was ready to make the next jump to be an all-star, improving his three-point shot tremendously in the off-season. But before the start of the season, Tyreek underwent arthroscopic surgery in his right knee. It forced him to miss the first two months of the season, and when he returned, he was sluggish, and on top of that, was still dealing with tendinitis issues with that right knee. So he opted in for another surgery, which ruled him out for the rest of the season. When he finally returned the following season, he wasn't the same player as before. He couldn't move his feet as quick, and his shot looked weak. So the Pelicans, desperate to surround quality players around AD, shipped Tyreek back to Sacramento as a piece of the DeMarcus Cousins deal. That second stint with Sacramento was forgettable, only playing in 14 games before signing with the Grizzlies in the offseason for a one-year $3.3 million deal. There, he surprised a bunch of people, having an impressive bounce back year and arguably having his best statistical season of his career, averaging 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists while connecting on almost 40% of his threes. But on the other hand, the Grizzlies had a downright awful year. They lost Mike Conley 12 games into the season to an Achilles injury. That was followed up by them firing head coach David Fisdale after he and Gasol got into a very much public dispute. And then there was still the fact they were still housing Chandler Parsons' massive contract, which took up 23% of its salary cap and restricted them from acquiring quality talent. With all that mixed together, they boasted the second worst record in the Western Conference. So Tyreek to them remained a little shimmer of light, a piece they can trade to acquire quality draft picks and young talent to turn their franchise around. They sat him out as trade deadline approach to reduce the risk of him injuring himself and them losing an asset. So playoff teams began calling the Grizzlies to negotiate a trade for him, but no deal was made. And in the offseason, Tyreek would leave as a free agent to join the Pacers on a one-year, $12 million deal. A move many said was great. They said Tyreek would provide the Pacers another offensive threat and help them get over the hump. But Tyreek didn't live up to this. With the Pacers, he played some of the worst basketball of his career. He was a negative on the offensive and defensive end. Across the board, his numbers plummeted. I can't stress to you how bad he played with the Pacers. His teammate, Bojan Bogdanovic, was shooting better from three than Tyreek was from the field. And it didn't help that he wasn't behaving professionally either. Serving a one-game suspension from the Pacers for violating team rules. We don't know if this terrible year with the Pacers is the reason as to why he used drugs. But we do know he was caught. And for that, the league handed him out a two-year suspension from the NBA due to him violating the league's anti-drug program. April 21st, 2019 is likely the last time we've seen Tyreek in an NBA uniform. His fall was deep and inevitable. A cherry-picked stat perceived him as the prodigal savior of the Kings franchise. People let the 25-5 season define what he was supposed to do, and it became quickly clear that he was not one of those greats. He was just an overhyped player that had a great marketing campaign behind him. The fall of Tyreek 
came down to bad coaching, bad choices, being overhyped, and having a whole lot of injuries. He is the first inductee to the Hall of Falls, but there's many more to come. And guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. And remember, in the comments, tell us who the next episode of Hall of Falls should be on. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.